Right, this is the most rubbish costume I've ever made. <laughs> Time was pressing. Sorry I'm late, folks, but uh, great to see you. Uh, although it's probably not great to see me. God knows what I did with the rabbit costume. I packed it away neatly after last year, thinking, probably not need this again, but just in case, I'll just have it all ready in one bag. So I can just whip it out, Easter 2022, and uh, away we go. Well, could I find it? No, I couldn't. And I'm not at home. I'm at my parents' house, hence the unusual old furnishings in the background. Um, and I've had to make these rubber ears out of handkerchiefs, which they're actually not bad, not bad. But I'm just having trouble sticking them to my head because I don't have time. So I lost it. I lost the Yoohoo sponsorship. I can't believe it. They stopped sponsoring me. So I'm just using sellotape, which is rubbish, of course. Anyway, that's not bad. I, I just had to think as I drove out here, like literally five minutes ago, what can I make a rabbit costume out of? So I've got an old sheet. Uh, this is used, this is this is the sheet that was covering my dad's uh, lathe. Yes, a real giant lathe. He does a lot of woodwork. It's just over there. I know many people would think it uncomfortable sharing a house with a lathe, but hey, that's parents for you. No, so I've got the sheet off the lathe. So the lathe is currently unprotected. Wait a minute, I'll swing it around so you can see it. There it is. Look, I wasn't kidding. It's a giant lathe. Um, tell you what, hell of a mess to clear up for my poor mother after every time he does something. <laughs> Never mind, so I've got the sheet off the lathe, which I tried to go over my head, but it was interfering with the ears. And uh, and some handkerchiefs for ears and some forks for <laughs> whiskers. There we go. It's uncanny. Uncanny how like a rabbit look. Anyway, I've got some real rabbits here to help me out. I've got a special guest from a gig I did in Germany about 20 years ago. The uh, You've seen this before, possibly, the rabbit made of straw. A fine chap he is, and he's got his own stick stuck up his little bottom. Must be painful, but he's, he's, he's been up there for 20 years. He's pretty used to it now. And uh, on, that's on, on the, in the blue corner, and in the red corner, we've got, yes, hello, folks. It's the killer rabbit from um, Monty Python and the Search for the Holy Grail. Uh, it could get, could get nasty there. It could get vicious. I was thinking right, we could end the show with a, a boxing match, a rabbit match, uh, ombre hombre mano a mano you know uh yeah see who wins we'll maybe we'll try that later anyway i meant to start not by speaking i meant to start playing worship down and i forgot so here we go <laughs> Anyway, it was a very moving film, Bright Eyes. I was um, I was quite uh, I was quite moved by it as a child when it was shown across the road in the the, the church hall here in Kirkliston on an old projector. Uh, was that the one that broke down several times? The film I know it was one film broke down. Maybe that was Gregory's film. Anyway, oh, it was it was terrifying. The the point where the farmers are digging the digging the uh, rabbit digging the spades into the rabbit warrens and the rabbits are are running. Uh, uh, oh, terrifying, terrifying for a child. Uh, I was like watching, you know, uh, it was like watching Nightmare on Elm Street when you're five years old. It's really pretty, pretty uh, tough stuff. Watch it down. Don't recommend it for the faint hearted, but uh, if you want to dig out your, your uh, VHS library or your Betamax library, uh, I'm sure you can Google it. Okay, so today's show is all about rabbits, and uh, we've, got, we've got lots of tunes about rabbits. Uh, First tune I'm going to play you is it's called not surprisingly the rabbit. Uh, I've got some music here that I printed off Tinternet earlier. 
Uh, but I don't need the music for this one. Yeah, yeah, it's, I can even remember some tunes. <laughs> Faint rumbling in the background there. That is because uh, Kirkcuston, where my parents live, a uh, wonderful village that I grew up in. Uh, however, uh, has a few minor drawbacks. One of which is it's at the end of Airport Runway Number One for Edinburgh Airport, which means the, there's a constant uh, taking off and landing of uh, planes. It was pleasantly quiet uh, for the two years of. COVID, unfortunately, most of that I couldn't come and visit and appreciate how quiet it was. So, we're back to the... Uh, anyway, I managed to close all the windows, so uh, the, the deep rumbling is not... Uh, it's not a hungry stomach behind the accordion, no. I've had my porridge today. What a porridge... What a mighty porridge it was, by the way. I'll tell you about what I had in a minute. But, um, sorry, I don't have it just to, to display eating it live on show today. Uh, I know you must be very disappointed, because everybody likes to see what, what version of porridge I'm eating on a Sunday. Um, uh, no, it's just not a rumbling tummy. It's just it's just giant planes taking off. Um, yeah, so the porridge I had had blueberries, banana, spicy hot honey. Yes, uh, be in your bonnet, honey. It's a mixture of honey and Scotch bonnet chilies. Fantastic idea. That was Christmas present, was it? Yeah, Christmas present from uh, Debbie Warren. Very kind, very kind supplier of uh, props to the show as well, and uh, and props to my <laughs> props to my stomach. Uh, and also blue, did I say blueberries and bananas in it? Yeah, and cream, double cream, fantastic. Honestly, porridge just turns into the, like the dish, the dish of the gods when you have all these things. But well, it's it's already brilliant anyway. Anyway, I'm just thinking when I was playing there that with this um, sheet, it looks more like a cape. It could be like Captain Rabbit. You know, has Marvel, has Marvel Avengers got Captain Rabbit yet? I could gnaw through like cables of 
bombs and stuff like, hey, Captain Rabbit, nibble through the red wire. The red wire? Are you sure? Maybe the yellow wire, the blue wire. No, the red wire. <laughs> <laughs> okay, no, probably not. No, Avengers, probably, Marvel probably not looking for Captain Rabbit, are they? It was a forlorn hope. Anyway, I'll tell you what, this sellotape is a great idea. Uh, never mind you who get useless moustaches falling off. These forks are absolutely solid. Look at that. Not, not a chance of them falling off. I should be uh, using sellotape for my moustaches in the future. Okay, so you get a little bit of, little bit of sheen. Uh, but it's not bad. So it's, it's a lot better, you know. Long lasting. Longevity is what we're looking for in this show. Oh yeah. Maybe we've maybe we've outlasted our longevity of this show already. I don't know why I'm still doing this, really don't. But I can see some of you are watching, so I guess I'm doing it for you. Uh anyway, I've got some rabbit some more rabbit tunes for you. Uh what was the one? What's the one that's the uh, rabbit sitting in the bush? Where is that? I've got music here. I'm just sight reading this. But uh, luckily for you, I'm quite a good sight reader. This is a traditional Newfoundland polka, like an Irish polka. Uh, so I'm going to play a couple of Irish polkas after it just to fill it out a bit because it's quite short. It was actually a brilliant tune. Just discovered it when I googled tunes with rabbits today, which is uh, yeah. There's lots of there's lots of weird groups out there on the internet. Tunes with rabbits, you can find them. Uh, and uh, rabbits sitting in the bush, it's called. Uh, let me remember how it goes. Oh yeah.
doing the wrong way now. Yeah, and another plane takes off into the sunset. Oh, it's a bit cloudy today. I think uh, England's are getting all the sun as usual. Scotland's just been left out of the fun, left out of the party as usual. Uh, it's not just the government that, that doesn't think about us, it's the weather as well. Uh, I just pushed the camera back a bit there so you could get the full benefit of these years since I spent all of 30 seconds making them. Uh, oh, the cell tape's not so good on the phone, it's excellent down here. Let's just stick it up there. I'm just going to redouble my efforts. Oh, oh, oh. Houston, Houston, we have a problem. Main borough, in borough, we have a problem. <coughs> Warren's coming apart the seams. Right, that's. That's not bad. That's good. A little bit Mickey Mouse, but it's okay. I was just thinking, I could have accidentally invented a wonderful gadget. You know how <coughs> everybody's just trying to uh, think of the br brilliant thing that's not been invented yet that they can patent and make a, a billion pounds out of, and then you know go into space like Elon Musk and um, Jeff Wazos, whatever his name is. <coughs> so yeah, I was thinking my way to get into space <coughs> is the double-ended fork just invented this. Afterwards, after the show, I'm going to patent it. It's amazing. So when you get tired of using one end of the fork, you can spin it around and use the other. Ah, but I hear you ask, why would you do that? That's actually a good question. It's not really any point, is there? Um, no, so I'll need, to, I'll need to work on that. But anyway, I still think there's a lot of money in this. Could start as a crazy idea on a, on a, on a Sunday afternoon show. Could turn into a world beer. Just you watch. Uh, I've got some great messages coming up there. Hi, Pat. Dennis, Pat, of course, uh, runs the quarantine gigs there. There's, there's no many of us left. It's only a Sunday afternoon and there's only two or three folk doing it now. But uh, we're hanging on in there for the, the time. Anyway, Pat's one of them. Pat's running it all. Thanks, Pat. Uh, Leslie Kerr, love the whiskers. Thank you, Leslie. This is like a radio show, isn't it? We've got some, <laughs> we've got some dedications. Uh, I had a nice message earlier from Gordon Calder who said he was watching this on the plane down to London because he's going to see Susie Quattro. Wow, what what a double act there. You got me in the support act dressed as a giant banana uh, rabbit and uh, and then Susie, Qu Susie Quattro for afters. Oh, you could use the other end of the fork for your pudding, couldn't you? Tired of using a spoon for your pudding? Try the double-ended fork. It's like the uh, like the uh, the jerk when Steve Martin, the film where Steve Martin invents these uh, this little thing for stuffing your glasses fall off your your nose, and the guy goes away and patents and makes a million pounds from. Uh, what was there? There was another message before that as well. I can't remember. I don't know if I can scroll back through. Well, I can scroll back through messages. Brilliant. I never didn't. I didn't know I could do that. Right. Um, oh yeah, Urban Sandstrom. Sandstrom. From Sweden, happy Easter, happy Eastern, <laughs> happy Easter to you. Glad Påsk, Påsk they call it in uh, Sweden, Easter. By the way, that's why I'm just a rabbit. I forgot to mention. It's, it's, I'm not just. It's not. It's not. Wasn't just a random thing I was going to do. No, it's the Easter rabbit and the Easter bunny. Uh, okay, take the crap one. I'll grant you, but needs must. Uh, Urban very kindly was this time last. Uh, no, almost a week ago. This time Monday morning, uh, well this time Monday morning I was almost home, but very early at 4 o'clock in the morning, Swedish time, which was 3 o'clock in the morning our time, uh, Urban drove me uh, half an hour to catch the train and to begin my long journey home from Sweden. And uh, thank you very much again for that Urban. By the way, can you pass on to your missus, uh, uh, Gunilla, that the pulp was unbelievable. Uh, Leeton pulp is this thing, it's a traditional thing that uh, people make. And this is, uh, it's like a little, it's like an egg, it's like an Easter egg, but it's made with dough, like really hard dough, grey, unappetising looking dough. But it's really, actually really tasty, it must be just packed full of, it's made with rye flour, that's why it's kind of grey in colour, and it's, it's packed full of carbohydrates and, and energy. And uh, when you get to the middle, you get this little meaty bit in the middle, it's like a, it's like a sort of scotch egg, but with meat in the middle instead of an egg. And uh, oh my god, I took two of them with me and had them in the airport uh, in Copenhagen. Copenhagen, as they say in Sweden. Uh, yeah, because I was flying back by via Denmark. Oh my God, I did all of Scandinavia in one week last week because I was going to Sweden. I flew via Norway, spent far much more time in Norway than I meant to because I missed the second flight. And uh, and then on the way back, I was just popped into popped into Copenhagen, you know, for a quick cuppa and a and a bicky. Uh, yeah, because uh, I didn't do Finland, but that's not really Scandinavia. That's that's no man's land. Somewhere in between. 
Uh, okay, done rabbits sitting in the bush. Pretty good. I don't need that anymore. Ah, the rabbit's ear. Now, this one looked interesting. Uh, it's a jig. And <coughs> jigs mean fun. I don't have any tunes to go after it, so I'll see if I can think of something. Uh, <laughs> Here, and uh, let's get a, let's get a professional opinion on what uh, what we thought of that. So, here we have the rabbit's ear, uh, new tune played for the first time. Well, I don't know if it's a new tune, but it's played for the first time on this show ever. Um, let's ask the killer rabbit from uh, Monty Python in Search of the Holy Grail uh, what I thought of it. Uh, please come on stage, killer rabbit. Okay, Killer Rabbit, could you tell us um, what do you think? What did you think of uh, this tune, the Rabbit's Ear? And by the way, what do you think of, of my ears? They're not quite as good, pink and fluffy as your ears. Uh, okay. Well, Sandy, uh, even though I'm a Killer Rabbit, I've got quite a high voice, which is a little bit embarrassing for a Killer Rabbit. But don't let the high voice deceive you. Um, I thought the Rabbit's Ear was quite a, a nice tune, quite catchy. A uh, nice little jaunty jig with a good bounce to it, good bunny bounce, yes. Uh, but on the other hand, why are you even asking my opinion? Because I'm a rabbit and I eat my own droppings. So really, I don't think I've got any taste at all. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what a cheeky little rabbit. Let's hope he doesn't get mental later and end up uh, and end up eating somebody or, or ripping my arm off. Um, I might soil my armour if he does that. Okay, rabbit's ear. Good. But no longer needed. Uh, now we've got uh, some other rabbit tunes, but before we get on to that, I know I know you can't wait for more rabbit tunes. Uh, I've got uh, another tune that I woke up. I, don't, I woke up. I don't, I don't normally wake up. No, I do wake up every day. Sometimes I don't want to wake up, but having amazing dreams. But um, anyway. Getting off the point here. Uh, I woke up this morning and this tune was running around my head. And normally tunes don't run around my head. Normally my, my head's just a blank, you know, apart from the weird dreams. But uh, when I wake up, it's just like... <sighs> tumbleweed, empty. Anyway, no, there was this tune running around it. And it was a tune from ages ago. And I don't know what it is. I can't remember what it is, but I can remember how to play it. So I thought that was fate. And I would play it for you today. Um, yeah, maybe tell me what it is. <laughs>
Was it the last chord? Yeah, that was uh, that was uh, unknown first tune and um, the major man kiss go. Nice, nice. If anybody knows what that first tune is, please do let me know. Uh, yes. Um, what was I going to say? Like, yeah, different production values from last week. Yeah, we're in expensive Sweden. There were their fancy cameras, our green screen behind, and the exclusive backdrop. Um, the uh, Costume. Even they even got in a wheelchair for me for uh, to be uh, Doctor Strange love, Doctor Bell love. The uh, no 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 uh, endless amounts of no expense spared, no endless amounts of shaving foam for the uh, the hair, dry cleaning bills played, everything everything just everything you want from a show. And here we are back in grotty old Scotland with a couple of forks stuck under my nose and a couple of hankies stuck to my head and. Uh, out in Kirkliston with the, the noise of the airplanes in the background. A terrible, terrible state of affairs. Eh? We're going to have to up our production values back here in Scotland. Well, by the way, the airport's not the only uh, slight drawback of Kirkliston. It is a little uh, oasis, I might say. Uh, in, it's, out, it's out in the country, uh, and yet right next to the uh, the city, Edinburgh. But, of course, yeah, there's a few few drawbacks to the, the airport, is number one. Number two, uh, on the, the other side, the village is the uh, sewage works, which has a, an unfriendly odour um, now and again creeping across the village. Uh, and then to the northwest, there's the spur uh, of the, the beginning of the M9, uh, which is the motorway to um, Stirlingshire. So if you don't get uh, enough noise from the planes going overhead, you can get uh, buzzed by the cars constantly day and night on the other side of the village. Thankfully, though, the piggery that used to be in the fourth corner, the fourth point of the compass, is no longer there because uh, that's where one of the places I worked as a, as a, as a young uh, schoolboy in my summer holidays. Uh, indoor piggeries with thousands of pigs. Wow, that was a job, I can tell you. Uh, sticking a plastic fork on, on some paper ears onto your head is uh, actually quite easy compared to working in a piggery. So this is, this is a step up in the world for me. Uh, anyway, the piggery is no longer. Yeah, Paul Yard's piggery is not there anymore. The, eventually, the, the pigs outside and they had their own little huts and that, but that wasn't like that in my day. Oh, no, I was like in these like windowless, giant dorms, piggery dorms. And uh, oh my God, the smell was something else, I can tell you. Oh yes, quite an upbringing, quite an upbringing. It's like, but look where I am now. <laughs> All that's behind me. <laughs> Anyway, don't let me put you off coming to visit for Cliston. It's got it's got a chip shop, it's got a Chinese, and now it's got its own Italian restaurant. Oh my God! Oh yeah, things are happening here in Kirky. Right, talking about things happening, I promised you more rabbit tunes, and uh, this one is called Catching Rabbits. This is a great tune, actually. I just discovered this on the internet this morning as well. This is by Ian Powery, uh, famous uh, fiddle player, and uh, he is uh, job seer. I'm on the rabbit catcher as well. Uh, here it goes, catching rabbits. Ah, now was there another tune I was going to play with this one? Oh yes, rabbit stew. This is what you do when you catch the rabbits. You put them in the rabbit stew. This is a Quebec, a Quebec reel. Quebec, Quebecois, Quebecois. Ah. Okay. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
actually maybe played them all the way around because uh, I, you know, I think the catching rabbits is marginally better than the rabbit stew that followed. But anyway, you can't have the stew without catching the rabbit first, I suppose. So it was logical in a chronological way, the way I played it. And these things are important to me. Uh, yeah, cause rabbit stew reminds me of an attempt to make, to make rabbit stew myself as a student. God knows why, it was like beans on toast the rest of the time. I don't know why I suddenly branched out into, it's not it's like going from one extreme to another, you know, I suddenly went, well, I'm going to get a rabbit. Must have seen a rabbit for sale somewhere cheap in a supermarket or something. Anyway, I brought, brought this rabbit back and tried to bake it in, uh, well, uh, baking it would have been sensible in the oven, but I, I got a Pyrex dish and uh, put it in and, uh, and just, you know, carrots. Yeah, 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 might as well give the, give the rabbit, in case it, in case it wakes up and fancies a nibble of a carrot, put in some carrots with the, the, uh, the the, uh, the 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 rabbit yeah that'd be like putting me in a, a big stew and adding in kebabs you know in case I get hungry uh, that's a great idea anyway I put I made the stew and put it on instead of putting it in the oven baking it which would be sensible no I put it on the top and put a, a gas ring because I thought it'd be quicker under the under the gas ring you can't do that you can't do that with Pyrex you can't do that with anything glass because uh, what happens is it explodes yeah so I had uh, my first and last attempt at rabbit stew exploded literally I was lucky I wasn't killed. Uh, so yeah, rabbits are dangerous, so remember that kids, this rabbit may look soft, cuddly, but these things can kill you. Particularly this one, this one is a, this one is deadly. See if it gets you in the neck like that. That's it, there's nothing you can do. It's almost impossible to get their tiny little teeth out of there. Right. Uh, <laughs> oh my god, I can't believe it. The show's almost over. This is a crap show as well, but it must have been going really well if I've lost track of time. Well, I enjoyed it. Uh, anyway, can't finish the show without doing a special request, which is for a very good friend of mine, ex-pupil of mine, who came so good she didn't need my advice anymore. Uh, Kat Craig, who is going to be 50 tomorrow. Um, don't know if she knew I was going to tell everybody that, but there you go. <laughs> it's too late now. Uh, so congratulations to Half Century, and this is one of our first uh, favourite uh, tunes, which is couple of tunes I wrote called The Waltz in Time and Kate Jurgensen's Waltz. Uh, so this might probably be the last set actually. I've got well, I've got one more rabbit tune I might squeeze in. Thank you. 
Okay, I did promise you one more rabbit tune. Oh, we're going, we're going over slightly. Who cares? Who cares? Let's just do it. The Bunny's Hat by Dave Bloom. <laughs> I didn't think of that before doing the rabbit teeth. Oh, I that just completes the picture now. It looks perfect. It looks like a real rabbit. Well, that's all we've got time for today, folks. And uh, I never explained why I was out for custom here anyway. It's because uh, it's the offer of free free food. In fact, I'm supposed to supply some of the food. And I had one job to do, which was to get 10 burgers. And uh, guess what I failed to do yet? Because it was a little bit late. Because I was looking for a blithering rabbit suit in my basement for about an hour. Um, yeah, so I've just got to go and get the burgers now, but then we're going to have a Barbie outside, which is out there in, in Barbie land, because it's not, it's not very safe to have a barbecue inside, much as I would like to, because it's a little bit cloudy today, but it is nice and warm outside, so that's where I'm going to go. So I'm just going to sign off now, folks, and hope you're all having a lovely Easter wherever you are, and uh, don't forget to put another rabbit on the Barbie. Goodbye! Oh, God almighty, can't believe I've left the rabbit suit somewhere I can't find it. Anyway, better get the Barbie on. All I've got is this rabbit. Uh, oh, microwave. I know, we'll keep the rabbit in here. Beep, beep, beep. It's not even switched on. Oh. Parents, they're just so ridiculously safe. I can't be bothered plugging it in. Maybe that's probably long enough. Ah, oh, yes. It smells delicious. Oh, girl. It's still on again. I don't believe it. Wait a minute. This is an excellent opportunity. Hello there, folks. I'm still here. I can't believe I've let that happen. I know what this can be used for. It can be used for scooping out the insides of a rabbit. Mmm. Mmm. Delicious. And then, <laughs> and then you can use it to clean out his little ears. Mmm, pudding, yummy. Goodbye.